you also uh, wrote a book called The Whole Soy Story. How did soy become pushed as a, as a healthy choice for us back in the what, 70s, 80s, somewhere in there? Well, the soy industry had a problem. They were making vegetable oil, and of course that was a very profitable product, and to do that they'd take that little soybean and they'd smash it up and they'd take out the oil. So they still had soy protein left over. And if you're a good businessman, what are you going to do? Are you going to spend money taking it to the landfill, or are you going to turn that into another profit center? But they had a little problem on their hands, that soy had a terrible image with people. It was seen as something that you would eat only if you were very poor, or something that they would eat in Cuba or Russia or in a country like that, or something that you know a hippie in a commune would be eating. So it had a real image problem. And the soy industry did something that was absolutely brilliant. And that was they decided to turn it into a health food because that had an upscale image, that upscale people who could afford anything were choosing soy protein products to get healthy. So that not only made the image better, but people think, are thinking, I'm willing to pay for this mm -hmm. and pay well for this because it's going to prevent all these terrible diseases. So what do we know about soy now? Um, it seems like we hear more about it all the time. What do we know now that we didn't back then in terms of uh, its nutrition and health benefits, for lack of a better word? Well, uh, there was actually a whole lot of science back in the 1970s, and the science goes back a good 70 years and hundreds and hundreds of studies. And some of the very best studies were all done by the USDA with some very highly qualified and honest scientists. And their task was to try to figure out a way to take soy protein and make it into a healthy animal food. So there's only so much soy protein that can be used in, say, chicken feed and you know cow feed and things like that before the animal starts to die prematurely. I mean, they like the fact that the animal would get thyroid disease because the animal would fatten up quicker. Sure. But they, of course, were noticing major birth, birth defects and, and other health problems. So the science has been back there for quite a while. But when it was first promoted as a healthy human food, nobody was really talking about it or, you know, to the extent they are now. And gradually they built up this uh, reputation for it. Very good marketing, obviously. So many people will, will say, I know soy's healthy, I should eat more of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Their bigger problem was um, what they discovered the problem, like, um, a lot of people would think soy was healthy, but they got so much gas from it that there was a problem. You know, marriages were falling apart. Um, you know, uh, this was a problem, and they called it, in the literature, they called it the flatulence factor. Uh, factor number two was the matter of the taste, a certain bitter aftertaste and what's called mouthfeel. So they had a lot of top well-paid scientists working on trying to get it so it wouldn't have that nasty aftertaste and, um, and the mouthfeel problem. And I think a lot of people actually know what we're talking about. Like if you're, say, test, testing something, you know, say a sample at a health food store, and you put it in your mouth and the initial reaction is, oh, this is pretty good, but then you're chewing it and then it's like you're ready to spit it out. That's a mouthfeel and aftertaste problem. So that was another big problem the soy industry had. So they'd solved the initial problem of it seemed like a poverty food. So they'd improved its image, but they had a lot of work to do on taste and texture and um, these other factors. Do we know any more about, about what it does to our overall health? Well, the studies keep coming out, and the soy industry, of course, has been working very hard to uh, figure out health benefits. And I've been to their conferences, and it's really funny. They're saying, I know it'll help with bone health if we could just figure out the right dose or how long or when to start it. We know it'll work. We just haven't figured out why <laughs> or how. You know, they're still working on it.